As young as five, I decided that I wasn't like other people. I wasn't finding my people. And so I decided that it would be a good idea to change my behavior to be more like them. So I became an excellent observer of others, and I would mimic them. And I did that from five to 21. They talk about fake it till you can make it. I was trying to make it to normal. Well, at 21, I didn't make it there. What I did instead is I found a C++ class. <laughs> In that class, I discovered code. I discovered that I could learn the secret language and I could control computers. I can make that computer do something that it was never going to do had I not written that code. And I was fascinated. And it was hard. And you would get into something and like all of a sudden you would have a bug and you're like, I don't know what this is, but eight hours later and a lot of coffee later, you figured it out and nobody else cared, but you were so excited. You had a triumphant moment all by yourself with your coffee next to you. That was my gig. That was my life. That was the rest of my life. I found a job. I found a passion. But more important than that, I found my people. I found people in that class who didn't notice my hair, didn't care if I wore makeup, had no idea what kind of clothing I was wearing, and had no idea if it looked good or not. It wasn't a thing. When I wore a bathing suit to school in kindergarten, that was a big deal. Had I shown up in class in a bathing suit, it would be, eh, that's fine. It was OK. And they didn't notice. And I didn't notice a lot of things about them. I didn't notice that somebody came in in flip-flops and shorts to work when I was their manager. Eh, that's fine. I didn't notice that <laughs> Sometimes at work, they weren't working. As long as they got their job done, it was fine. And I didn't notice that they were all men. Until I went to a development conference. And at that conference, they had the women of the conference meet at a stairwell at a certain time. And because I'm always running late, I was running late to this as well. And so I'm kind of running there, and I get to the stairwell, and I look up, and I get angry. Because there are five women on the stairwell, and they are getting ready to take that picture. And there were 500 people at this conference. And I was angry because they showed me that there are no women in IT, and I didn't realize that. And I kept looking up at the conference. And I realized that there is zero diversity in IT. This was a while ago. I think we all know that now. But I, I really didn't notice. I didn't notice that this community that accepted me, it seemed so inclusive because they took a weirdo like me and said, you're OK. We want to work with you. We knew a secret language, a secret that we would share with other people, but they weren't interested. Nobody wanted to talk about code except for us. We knew we could change the world with this, and the world was changing. Everyone had a computing device in their back pocket. And we knew how to make it different. We knew how to take that next step and change the world. But we were working so much that we forgot to look up and we forgot to see who was around us and who was working on changing the world. And were we working on changing the entire world for everyone, or were we working on changing our world? So I was angry, but I kept working, right? I loved my job. Uh, I was good at my job, and I loved the people I worked with. But it bothered me, because it wasn't getting any better. Years had gone by, and the stats were pretty much the same. So I started to dabble in education and dabble in volunteer organizations that were working on diversity in IT. But I was dabbling. I was focused on my work. And I decided to pursue this passion, this thing that had started to grow into something that I worked on all the time 
on evenings and on weekends needed to be my primary thing. That meant that I had to leave a job of 14 years that I loved and had really saved me. Um, I had to leave my family, the people I worked with. But I decided, okay, I'll give myself six months to figure out what this is that I need to do in this area, and then I'll figure out how to leave my job. That weekend, the universe decided, Becca's not a planner. She's never going to wait six months and do this. I got an email that Sunday from the director of the school where I took that C++ class. And it said, I just got a work email bounced back. Did you quit your job? If so, we want you to come and work with us and be the director of a program that works with high school students and works to solve the diversity in IT issue. <laughs> so I cried, right? Because that's the only response to that. And then I said, yes. We'll figure it out. It's a little sooner. It's, uh, I've, I've got to do a lot of things. I left my home. I moved to a tiny little apartment downtown. I got rid of my car. I went all in. And I knew that the summer camp couldn't just be, and the program couldn't just be, here's IT. That wasn't enough. I had to make an IT community that made sense to me and that would make sense to the students. So we brought the students in. Uh, we had about 40 in the summer program every year. And they were from some very poor areas of the city. They were from uh, some schools that didn't have a lot of support, from some families that didn't provide a lot of support. But they were from all over. Most of them didn't know each other going in. And they worked together in project groups. And they built IT projects. They built amazing IT projects in only three weeks. And they got together as a group and they presented those projects at the end to over 100 people, including faculty members, families, college kids, their peers. And it was amazing to the audience members what they had done. But what was really amazing about that experience is that everyone in the audience now understood why diversity in IT is important. Because in, ID, in IT, we build solutions to problems that we discover. And we in IT are building solutions to problems we discover and we are changing how we live. We're changing how we all live. The students who were in our camp identified problems and developed solutions that most of the people in the IT community currently would not have identified and wouldn't have solved in that, main, in that manner. Because it worked for them, and it was a problem for them. Those are the people who need to continue with this so that we can change this IT community that I love into our community. The way that we made our community in our camp is we brought in professionals and college students who looked like our students, who had backgrounds like our students. And these brave souls stood up every morning and told their story. They cried. They talked about homelessness. They talked about how they didn't have food at home when they were growing up. They talked about things that they had done wrong went down a different path for a while. They talked about how it was okay to make mistakes and you could get back up from those. And you're gonna make them over and over and over again. Our college mentors, our college student mentors, would say, I'm not a math genius. And that's okay, I can still be in this field. You don't have to be. It's okay to say, I don't know. It's better to say, let's go look it up together. The students who were in this camp, they stayed engaged with us. They stayed engaged in IT. They are working in camps 
from other organizations. They are working in after-school programs. They have presented projects at other conferences. Some of them have already started in an IT program at a college. Some of them have applied and will start in the fall. And what is terrible and awesome at the same time is that our diversity numbers have gone way up because it doesn't take many people to get in. There were five women out of 500 at a conference. What I think was our differentiator is that we had so many people in this area who understood that when you feel different, you may be faking it in order to work in a field, in order to be in a class. And that these students really needed a safe place where they could stop faking it. What I encourage you to do is in all areas, we should build those communities where nobody is faking it, where it's safe to talk about your challenges where it's safe to fail and it's safe to have a different background from your coworker. I hope that we build my IT community that I love into a diverse community. This is a start. We have a lot of work to do. But I also hope that we build our Cincinnati community in the same way into something that we love and where we share. Thank you.